So the original idea of this was to have a backdrop for my live streams, my weekly show, my live streams each and every week. And so I started collecting Fallout props and putting them on my shelf, thinking it would be an interesting thing to talk about and look at during my live shows. Uh, but then I kept collecting, and then I kept collecting. And you know what? I never stopped collecting. And uh, yeah, this is the problem we have today. It's pretty much gone beyond just being a backdrop for my live show to a full-on Fallout Shrine. So there you go. This is my Fallout Shrine. Before we begin, please, I beg you, forgive the cameraman. I don't know how to shoot film. I couldn't get the autofocus to work on this thing, so I'm manually focusing as I get close. Just be gentle. I'll do my best. Now, the idea behind this shrine, so to speak, is I figured the sole survivor, the courier, the lone wanderer would probably collect things on his or her travels. And so I wanted this to be a collection of some of the most meaningful and interesting things that the player character would have found during his experience. I had a simple rule when putting it together. It all had to fit in the world itself. It had to be something that the player character would have stumbled upon during the exploration. So it wouldn't be a t-shirt that said Fallout 4 on it, for example, because Fallout 4 doesn't exist in the Fallout universe, right? Some of these are official Bethesda props, but most of them are fan creations. I got most of them on Etsy. I've collected these over a number of different years, and I don't recall the names of every person I've purchased from. I also want to preserve the anonymity of the creators who want it, but I will include the name and a link to the shop of those who responded to me on Etsy. But if you see something in my display that doesn't have a name or a link, you can probably find it on Etsy just by searching for it. That's, after all, how I found all of this to begin with. But to start, we've got all of my helmets. This is my T-45 helmet, and this was actually made by a mask store. This is a mask, but it still feels good on the head, and they put a lot of time and attention into all the details. It came out darker than I thought it would be. I thought it would have like a brushed metal appearance like all of the others, but it still turned out great. Probably one of my favorite masks. Then there's the T-51. That's an official Bethesda prop. Came with uh, an edition of Fallout 76. The lights work and it has a voice modulator. Then there's this T-60 helmet made by another guy on Etsy. Really high quality, hand painted, can also fit on your head and the light works. Love the amount of work that went into this one. And he did another one. This is the XO-1 helmet. I know there are a lot of other helmets you could get in the game, like the Excavator and some crazy ones you can get on the Atomic Shop, but I only wanted ones that I knew were lore-friendly and that were used by the U.S. military before the war. Well, the XO-1 wasn't used by the military, but it was designed by military before the war. Then there's the Liberty Prime statue I have. We don't find this in the game, but I imagine it's something that a military service person, like a general, would have on his or her desk. That's an official Bethesda prop. It turned out great. Love the way it looks. Then we've got my car shelf. These, again, do not exist in the Fallout world, but I imagine that there's something that would. Maybe a Chrysler's employee or executive would have a model of one of these cars on their shelves. In fact, the lore that comes with each of these little cars is that of a yearly award given to a Chrysler's employee. They're official Bethesda props made by the Wand Company, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. This is the basic one available on the Bethesda store. It's a blue fusion flea, and as you can see, the uh, canopy opens up there, showing off the beautiful insides. Then there's, this is a, a limited edition, this is the racing flea. It's got some wonderful racing insignia on the side there. And I love the lore that came with this. It came with a copy of a newspaper, the Boston Bugle, talking about the uh, racer who was in this car and how fast it went. Then there's this green one. This was never available retail. I remember reading that this was actually an award given to GameStop employees who sold uh, copies of Fallout 76. I got it on eBay, so I think the green one is pretty rare. Then there's the cherry red fusion flea. It looks beautiful. And then the picker up truck, or actually I think that's the pick you up truck. It's got the red rocket logo on the side there. And the hood does open up to show the engine. There's the regular pick, picker up truck that you get, the red one. 
They're gorgeous. Now, I started this collection with just the blue fusion flea. I figured, well, you know, they're not, they're not gonna come out with any more. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, then they came out with another one and I had to get it. And they came out with another one and I had to get it. But by the time I finished the collection you see before you, I, uh, I said, that's enough. They're just gonna keep on coming out with these doggone things and I'm gonna run out of room in my house. So I stopped collecting them at this. And you know, they've got a Slocum's Joe one now. I think they're gonna be coming out with a vault Tech van. And I think there's also a, a, a Nuka-Cola delivery truck. I might get that one, that one's really cool. But that's it, I'm done. Here's my Nuka-Cola shelf. And I love the Nuka-Cola bottles that I got here. So there's a, an author on Etsy who makes really cool Nuka bottles that uh, look like the real thing. Most of the Nuka-Cola bottles you're gonna find on Etsy are 3D pr uh, printed. And there's nothing wrong with 3D printing. I have many props that are 3D printed on this shelf. But the problem with 3D printing is uh, there's often a lot of 3D print lines on them. And then to get them in the right color, you gotta paint them. So you have to be both good at printing and painting. Um, it's hard to get a good combination when it comes to that. But these, I believe, are not 3D printed. Instead, they're made with um, a resin, I believe. I'm not sure how they were manufactured, but they're the highest quality, most realistic looking Nuka bottles that I've found on Etsy. There's a Nuka Cola bottle, then a Nuka Cola Quantum. Uh, that one actually has a UV reactive coating on it. It's supposed to glow in UV light. When I tested it, it didn't glow very brightly, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Same is true for the Nuka Cola Victory bottle back there, but uh, they are supposed to glow. Then I've got a uh, Nuka Cola lunchbox back there. That's an official Bethesda prop. Figured I'd get one, put it on display. Then over here we've got the Nuka Cola grape and Nuka Cola cherry by the same author. That back there is the Thirst Zapper. That's an official Bethesda prop. It comes with the Spirit Halloween costume set. I believe you just, I think it comes out every October for Halloween. Um, I had a guy design a stand for it. As you can see down there, it's got a uh, stand. I'll be talking about those stands in a moment. And then there's the Capian bottle right there. That's an official Bethesda prop. It's got Gumby arms and legs. You can pose it any way you want. L absolutely love it. Then I found somebody on Etsy who produces badges, fictional badges from fictional amusement parks. That's a Nuka World Season Pass. Then there's the Rocket Girl, the Nuka Girl from Nuka World. That's an official Bethesda prop. And I figured that would exist in the world. Probably a Nuka-Cola executive would have one of those on display. Same with the Seasons Pass. We don't find either of those in the game or, or the Nuka and Cappy figurines either. But uh, there's they're something I figure would exist in the world. This is my Fallout 3 shelf. Most of these are organized by game, like that's my Fallout 4 shelf, this is my Fallout 3 shelf, uh, but they're not always perfect. For some of these, I got pennants to stick to the back. So back there, you see I've got a Washington DC pennant. I found these on Etsy, somebody who just collected a bunch of historic pennants. And so I made sure that all of the ones I bought were gonna be lore friendly. They were, per uh, they were from the time uh, period of the, the Fallout universe, the pre-war Fallout universe, so I don't think any of them are you know, from the 80s or 90s, they're all uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. But that's Washington DC, perfect for Fallout 3 and Anchorage, right? Because of Operation Anchorage. I've got a vault Tech lunchbox over in the corner. There's a watch. Now you may say that's not lore friendly. After all, we only find it in the Tranquility Lane simulation. Uh, so it wouldn't be real. It was a simulated watch in Fallout 3, but I figure it's something that a vault Tech executive would probably get, right? Like this probably existed in the universe. So I've got one on display. Then I have an Enclave pin. I found someone on Etsy who makes pins and other metal objects from fictional universes. And that's really the only Enclave thing I have. Hard to find Enclave things. Then look at that, we've got Gary Blocks. I realize the Gary Blocks come from Fallout 4, but I, th I thought it would fit better on my Fallout 3 shelf. Found a woodworker on Etsy who uh, does custom woodworking items, and these are legit blocks, um, multiple-sided. You know, every single one is just like you would find the blocks in the game. And I just organized them to spell Gary. That's a special book, and it works. Like, it's got all of the right stuff on the inside, and it says you're special. On the outside, wonderful print quality there. Glossy and gorgeous. This, I think, is one of the prizes of my collection. That's a Fallout 3 and New Vegas Pip-Boy. 
You can find a lot of 3D printed versions of this on Etsy, but this one isn't 3D printed. The fellow who did it for me, I'm not sure how he made it, but as you can see, it's smooth. It's not 3D printed. You can't wear this particular one because I asked him to include a bunch of electronics. So the buttons do light up. You can recharge it with USB power. Wonderful job. And he produced the uh, stand for me. So it's got this stand that matches the official Bethesda stand, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Like that's the official Bethesda stand and I'll, I'll show it off in just a second. Then I've got a Vault 101 bobblehead on there and that is a hollow tape as it looks in, in Fallout 3. I'm not sure what's the canonical look of a hollow tape. I'm assuming the Fallout 4 slash 76 version is the canonical look, um, but, but who knows, maybe Rob Co created multiple types of hollow tapes and that's just one of them. Anyway, I wanted one on display. Then here's my Fallout 4 shelf. I've got a battle for Bunker Hill pennant back there, USS Constitution pennant down there. I know it's hard to see, but uh, for those who played Fallout 4, you'll know why I have those. And that is the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy. I love the way the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy looks. It's probably my favorite Pip-Boy in the game. And that's an official Bethesda prop, came with that stand. And uh, I had all of the stands that I'll show you today modeled after this stand. I love the way that stand looks. And I figured it's lore friendly, so all of the other ones need to match it. Then I've got a Vault 111 bobblehead, a stack of hollow tapes from Fallout 4 and 76 right there. That is a model of a T-51B suit of power armor. That's an official Bethesda prop. At first I wasn't gonna get it because I didn't think this would exist in the Fallout universe, but if you go to Vault 51 and go to the Overseer's office in Fallout 76, you find one of these on the desk of the Overseer. So it's canonical and I got one. That is a 10 millimeter pistol. My original thinking with the weapons is that I would only get weapons that really meant something to me in the game. But most of the weapons I actually used in the game are huge rifles like the Gauss rifle and the lever action rifle and uh, the medicine stick. So uh, instead I got weapons that I thought were iconically Fallout. And this 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout 4 is beautiful and in my opinion, iconically Fallout. And uh, the guy who made it for me he uh, didn't 3D print it. As you can see, there's no 3D print lines on there. He painted it beautifully. I love just, just the way it looks. It feels, looks and feels like a real gun until you pick it up and it's significantly lighter, but it looks great. And he modeled the stand after the Pip-Boy from Fallout 4. And he also is the one who made me the stand for the Fallout 3 Pip-Boy and my Thirst Zapper up there. Then I've got a fusion core. That's an official Bethesda prop. Uh, this is the best one I've seen. You know, it's, it's, it's not really heavy. It's pretty light, but it looks good and it's the right size. Uh, then I've got one of these Liberator drones from Fallout 76. I suppose that belongs on my Fallout 76 shelf down there, but um, I ran out of room and I didn't know where else to put it. I'll find a good spot for it later. It turned out great. Then there's the Mother Icon, that's from Far Harbor. I think the original Mother Icon from the game was supposed to have been created from wood, whittled from wood. Uh, this is 3D printed, but it still has a nice gleam to it. It looks just like the one in the game. Turned out wonderfully. Then I found a guy from Russia on Etsy who recreates foodstuffs, and he created my Institute drinking water and an Institute food packet. <laughs> there. He also made this wonderful Deezer's lemonade for me. Just the right size and look at all of the attention to detail he put on that. It's got the tape, it's got the marker, it's perfect. I have a few magazines from Etsy. These are just the magazine covers. The edges are nice and weathered. Didn't really know where to put them. Eventually I'm going to stick these to the covers of catalogs or magazines so that they look like bigger magazines. Then I don't know where I'll put them. And then these over here these are the Silver Shroud calling cards. I'm sure the Soul Survivor still has a bunch of these. Found these on Etsy as well. So I've got a stack of them here. Then below that shelf is my Fallout 76 shelf. And you can see it's got West Virginia uh, pennant on the back there. I was surprised to actually find one, but I did. There it is. There's my Fallout 76 Pip-Boy. That came from the kit. I had to build it, but they do sell the kits pre-assembled, which is probably what I would have done had they had them at the time. Uh, they have a few upgrades that I'm gonna install later with a working screen that does light up and flicker and a working radio for the unit. So I'll, I'll get those and install them later. And the same fellow who did the Fallout 3 Pip-Boy did the stand for my Fallout 76 Pip-Boy. Then I've got a couple of cards. There's a Vault-Tec card. 
Uh, it looks like a pass card from a from a vault or a dungeon. And there's my vault -Tex special badge. I got that at Bethesda's Greenbrier event. Don't know if it belongs on the shelf because it does have my face. And I don't think the Lone Wanderer, Courier, or Soul Survivor looked like me in any way, but there it is, it's on my shelf for now. Then the other one behind it is it was actually my room key for, for the hotel at the Greenbrier event. Then I found somebody on Etsy who makes other cards, like uh, this Wavy Willard's Season Pass card. He's the same guy who did the Nuka World uh, Seasons Pass card, and he did a Camden Park Season Pass card for me. Then there's this. I wanted this for the longest time. I had a hard time finding the Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 fan, but I finally found one. The, the problem with that fan is finding one that has the paddle-shaped blades. Uh, most of the fans have a bigger blade that's more efficient, that scoops more air, but these smaller paddle-shaped blades were harder to find. This is from the 20s, I think, but the, the label has worn off, so I don't know the brand behind it. It's not perfect, but it was the right color and it had the right paddle-shaped blades, so I got it. The base shouldn't be triangular, it should be rounder. The cage should be a little bit more elaborate, but hey, can't be perfect. Got the bobblehead here. This is a 76 bobblehead. Here we go, Vault 76. Then I've got a little Protectron model robot. This is just like the iBot model robot. Wait, I forgot to show that to you, didn't I? There it is, the iBot model robot. Uh, I found a guy on Etsy who makes these little model robots, and you recall the robots from Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. They come in the, uh, the robot model parts boxes. You can open them and create the robots. That was my iBot, then he made a Protectron for me. They should be the Fallout 3 versions of uh, the Protectron, but I'm not sure which is canonical, the Fallout 3 and New Vegas version or the Fallout 4 version. Maybe there are multiple looks to the Protectron. Either way, uh, I still love the way it turned out. Uh, that pipe pistol I actually got on eBay, so I don't know who made it, but uh, I love the way it looked. It's a pipe revolver. <clears throat> and uh, I had a base made by the same guy who did my Fallout 3 Pip-Boy, and it's got lettering on it that talks about uh, the street, the, the guns of Detroit, <laughs> because it was a Detroit scrap built weapon. Got a stack of hollow discs. These are official Bethesda props. You can find a box that has a bunch of kits inside and you can make all of the kits. And then that is really cool. That is of course from Fallout 76. It's the nuclear launch code fragment. You have to collect a number of these to launch nukes in the game. And it does light up as you can see. Then next to this is my Fallout New Vegas shelf. Uh, we'll start with the NCR helmet, the Ranger helmet. Wonderful attention to detail that went into this. It does have a working laser on the side there. Um, and uh, you can see through the red lenses. It is a mask, it works. Then beneath it, I've got an explosive bomb color. <laughs> I know that that had a part to play in all of the Fallout games, well, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, uh, but uh, my fondest memories are of the explosive bomb color are from the Sierra Madre, so I put it on my New Vegas shelf. Uh, the pennant on the back of this shelf is the Hoover Dam. I know my Ranger Sequoia partially blocks it, but uh, it does say Hoover Dam. I figure, you know, you go to the gift shop at the Hoover Dam, you probably walk away with one of those if you're the courier. Then there's the Ranger Sequoia. So when I started playing New Vegas, my plan was to use the Ranger Sequoia for my entire playthrough. But uh, I ended up with the Mysterious Magnum and used it instead. Not because it's better, but because I just couldn't bring myself to kill or steal from Chief Hanlon. That's a surefire way to get the Ranger Sequoia. I didn't want to kill any other NCR Rangers, so I had a hard time finding one. And by the time I finally found one, the game was over for me. So. Oh well, I put it on display here. Maybe I'll get a Mysterious Magnum as well. I found a company online that creates badges, like police badges and military badges, and uh, they had already created some Sunset Sarsaparilla deputy badges. Um, I saw a picture of it on their website, so I just asked them for one, and uh, it was cheap, came on time, it was great. Then I found someone on Etsy to make this Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle. Looks great, it's got liquid in it. Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle cap on top there. Then, of course, what display would be perfect without the platinum chip? Got my very own platinum chip over there. That came with the limited edition version of Fallout New Vegas, as did the deck of cards there. This deck of cards is amazing. I've got the Joker on display. That is, of course, Benny. We've got House down here. 
and a number of other faces. Uh, the artwork that went into this deck of cards is gorgeous. Just every single card is a piece of art. If you have an opportunity to get that deck of cards, I highly recommend it. The limited edition also came with these poker chips. These are each made after each casino. We've got Gamora, the Ultra Lux, the Tops. They're all there. Even Vault 21 is there. A chip for every casino. Then I wanted one from the Sierra Madre and I found a guy on Etsy who creates uh, coins and other badges from video games and fiction. And he did a double-sided Sierra Madre chip for me. There's the front. There's the back of the chip, bronze, just as it is in the game. And the same fellow created Legion coinage for me. So there's the back of a Legion coin, and there's the head of a Legion coin. And then I found somebody on Etsy who made some NCR dollar bills for me. And the, the Nuka-Cola bottle caps you see on display, that's an official Bethesda prompt. You can find them on a number of stores. Um, GameStop and Think Geek, I think, have those. But the Sunset Sarsaparilla ones had to be fan-made, so I found those on Etsy. Uh, and I got one Sunset Sarsaparilla. Asperilla Star bottle cap. The bullets for the Ranger Sequoia came with the weapon. The same fellow who made the NCR mask made the Ranger Sequoia for me. Really wonderful job. And I had the guy who did the Fallout 3 Pip-Boy make a stand for me that matches. And that turned out great as well. Then I've got a NCR pin. Which I believe does show up in the game. General Oliver maybe wore one. I forget. But I love it. Next, we move on to foodstuffs. I found a fellow on Etsy, he was from Russia, who uh, hand makes all of these boxes. And I told him which ones I wanted. Took him a long time, but the quality is amazing. There's a Dandy Boy apple. Uh, that Sugar Bombs was actually from somebody else, also on Etsy. A Fancy Lad snack cakes. Pork and beans, that's from Fallout 3 in New Vegas, I believe, not Fallout 4. The Sugar Bombs bowl, that I got on Amazon, actually. I think that's an official Bethesda prop. Doesn't appear in the game, but it's probably something that would appear in the universe. Then I got some Wonder Glue, 3D printed, looks amazing. That lighter I've actually had for years, long before I ever started playing Fallout, but I thought it fit, so I put it there. Found a lady on Etsy who created these tins for bobby pins and even included a few bobby pins with the tin. A nice touch. Blamco mac and cheese, yum yum deviled eggs, because nothing says lunch like a bunch of 200 year old deviled eggs. That's delicious. S Saddle up Salisbury steak, oh man, so tasty. Got some bubble gum and a caps stash. Gotta have a caps stash with caps pouring out of it. Buzz bites, because coffee I'm sure will stay hot inside a donut for 200 years. Uh, might not want to eat the Abraxo cleaner back there, but Oh well, I've got it on the food shelf anyway. Cram, love that cram, love the unique shape of that cram. Uh, the fellow spent a long time finding a tin that would match the tin from Fallout 4. He did a great job and finally found one. Then we've got some Instamash, and this is a Brownie Hawkeye, it's a real camera. Looks like the one from Fallout 4 because uh, the developers created their camera to look like the Brownie Hawkeye. So I got one, it was cheap on eBay. The pennant for back here is the Las Vegas one, uh, but I, kinda, I covered it with all of the box foods, but it should say Las Vegas. Can't see it. Oh, well. But down here, I've got San Francisco, of course, because San Francisco plays a role in Fallout 2. We haven't gotten there in my series yet, but we will. This is my munitions shelf. The same guy who did my Fallout 3 Pip-Boy did many of the explosives here. These, these explosives are so well done. You can't see any scan lines. They look like real movie props. Uh, this is, of course, a plasma mine. We've got a fragmentation mine there. He did a plasma and pulse grenade. There's a nuke grenade down there. That fusion core is an official Bethesda prop. That actually is a charger. It's basically a battery. You charge it up. Then you could charge your iPhone on it. It's smaller than the other fusion core I showed you, so I put it down here so that you couldn't tell the size disparity so easily. Got some microfusion cells back there. Those are 3D printed from another creator on Etsy. And the same guy who did my uh, blocks, my wooden Gary blocks, did these ammunition boxes for me. High velocity ammunition. These are all from the textures in the game. I suppose each box should be a different size because the ammo sizes are different, but oh, well, it can't be perfect. That baseball grenade, a fragmentation grenade, and then look at that. That is a mini nuke, and it was so difficult finding a mini nuke that was the right size. Most of the mini nukes you're gonna find are gonna be the wrong size or smaller. I actually bought a couple of them, uh, trying to find one was, that was the right size. That's my fault for not reading the description before buying. 
Oh, well, lesson learned. That's the right size, a one-to-one -one scale of the Mini Nuke. It looks great for my munitions shelf. Then moving on over here, we've got a variety of other stuff. Back there, I've got an Arcadia National Park Mount Desert Island pennant. That is, of course, the setting for Far Harbor, the DLC for Fallout 4. Um, I've got some Vim bottles proudly on display. <clears throat> now, the Vim bottle in Fallout 4 is a unique design. It doesn't look anything like that. Uh, the closest I've been able to find is it kind of looks like a, um, a Pam cooking oil bottle. I don't know if you know what those look like. It's a, it's a really weird shape. So I worked with a number of uh, creators on Etsy to try and find the right sized bottle and uh, none of us could find any. So I've got another guy who's working on creating a model that he can do for printing. The same guy who did the Fallout 3 Pip-Boy for me. Uh, I think he has like a, a resin casting thing that he's gonna do. I'll let you know if I ever get those. But in the meantime, I've got these Vim bottles, found them on Etsy and uh, the labels look wonderful with the Appropriate bottle caps on top. The fellow who did my food stuffs from Russia did my emergency drinking water right there. Look at that. <laughs> it looks just like the one in game. And the cotton candy bites from Nuka World. The fellow who did my Gary Blocks did that wonderful toy car. I wanted some toys from the Fallout universe and uh, couldn't find any for sale on the official site or on Etsy. So, but, uh, but I found this guy who was doing the blocks and I asked him if he could make this and he said yes. Then we've got the X11 compound from Fallout 4, right away, and then the green do not eat, not food thing. That's uh, from a loot crate, I believe. A nice little bottle of Rad X there. Got a tin of Mintats here, wonderfully painted. You can find lots of different Mintats on Etsy, but I just wanted the standard yellow one. Stim pack. And that jet, I love that jet. Most of the jets you're gonna find on Etsy is 3D printed, but this wasn't, this was a, a resin cast, I think. Anyway, it came out beautifully. It's the right weight. It's smooth, no ridges, no lines. Daddy-O down there, then a Psycho underneath, more jet, then an Alien Blaster. Found a creator on Etsy who was creating the Alien Blaster. Then I had the fellow who did my Fallout 3 Pip-Boy create a stand for it that matches the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy stand. And of course, another stack of holotapes. And finally, I've got my classic Fallout shelf. Well, it's kind of my classic Fallout shelf. Not everything is from classic Fallout. It's kind of my et cetera shelf, I suppose. It's got a Reno banner pennant back there. Um, not new Reno, but regular old, <laughs> regular old Reno. I uh, thought that would be good for this shelf because it's got a bunch of Fallout 2 stuff, like the cat's paw. Now in Fallout 2, that's a cat's paw magazine. But, and I didn't realize this until later, but apparently they modeled the cover of the Cat's Paw magazine from Fallout 2 off of a real piece of box art. And this is it. These are rubber soles for women's shoes. R I'm sorry, rubber heels. Rubber heels for women's shoes. It came out in like the 50s or something. And uh, they were disposable. <laughs> and it had the Cat's Paw box art. So I found some and I bought a box. Then I've got the Vault 13 Canteen, the same fellow who did all of my boxed goods from Russia, painted up and weathered this beautiful canteen and gave me that little pouch to go with it. Then I found somebody who made a Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 Pip-Boy. Now I'm not sure what the Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 Pip-Boy was supposed to look like. Uh, if you believe some promotional videos uh, uh, from Fallout 4, Robco was working on a wrist-mounted version of the Pip-Boy from the very beginning, they had a prototype going on that went on your wrist. But in Fallout 2, there's a scene when you're in Vault 8, and uh, if you're interacting with a computer, it asks you to slip your Pip-Boy into a slot to receive an upgrade, almost giving us the impression that it was a tablet-sized device. But then I recall reading some developer commentary on the Pip-Boy, um, and one of the Interplay employees said something about the original intent of it being a wrist-mounted device. But I'm not, the, I'm not sure what the truth is there, but I found this on Etsy, and it does light up. I don't know if you can see it, but it is lit now. The bulbs are glowing, and the screen is glowing as well. It's a little faint, but it says Pip-Boy 2000. Then there's a plasma pistol. Really the only character I have that used the plasma pistol was my institute character from Fallout 4. She used the plasma rifle. I've got another fusion core down there, 3D printed one. And uh, then there's this horrifying thing. Oh yes, that's terrifying. Now turn it off, turn it off. Oh. 
That's awful. Uh, <laughs> I've, so, look, I don't know what they were thinking at the time, um, but apparently this was a real children's toy uh, from back in the day, and it entertained kids, I guess. My daughter came in here. She's four years old. Uh, when I first got this, I had this on display. She stopped, looked at it, and said, Daddy, why is the monkey so scary? Uh... Yeah, it's a scary monkey. I don't know how kids would think that's fun, but apparently they did because it used to sell. It's a real, real thing. I did not have this made. It was, <laughs> I got this on eBay. You can find a bunch more. It's a symbol clapping monkey. And um, yeah, I had all, all these plans. If if I had all, all sorts of infinite time, I would be really creative. You could probably create a uh, uh, infrared camera right, right in here that would be able to detect movement and you could connect it via circuit to the motivator, uh, motivators in the back, or the mo motor in the back, so that it would be a motion detected uh, tripwire. <laughs> it would be, I think it would be pretty easy to make, but I don't know, <clears throat> I don't have the time right now. Maybe someday. Over in the corner there, we've got some robot model parts hiding in that wonderful box made by the same guy who did all of the boxed goods. That box, I think, came out a little big, I remember in the game, I don't think it was that big, but it's still wonderfully aged. And I've got a Mr. Handy robot sitting right there, chilling, looking good. And that is my Fallout Shrine. Ooh, and I almost forgot. Jangles, the Moon Monkey. This is an official Bethesda prop, came out recently. I believe you can find one on the Bethesda store. That's not where I got mine. I forget where I got mine. But uh, it has posable arms. It's not the right scale. It's not huge. If you look at the Jangles the Moon Monkey in Fallout 76 or Fallout 4, it's the size of a child. <laughs> but this one is not quite that large, but it's still, the detail is great. And I've got it on my shelf here. I've got a lot that I want to show off. There are many more props that I have that I want to show off, but um, I'm going to wait on doing that because I don't have the right spot for them yet. So I thought I would just show off my shrine, my shelf here. And when I get more, like, see, I've got a giddy up buttercup over there, <laughs> but it's not in the right spot yet. So tell you what, I'll follow up this video with another video showing off the rest of my collection and anything else I get uh, later on. This is what's so cool about gamers and the Fallout community in particular. These games inspire people to do such wonderful, creative things. Whether it's mods for Fallout 4, which I love and have reviewed extensively on this channel, or fantastic fan-made pieces of art like these that people so lovingly recreate by hand, every day I get to look at this shelf and be inspired by the creativity of others. So thank you to everyone on Etsy and eBay and everywhere else people go to be creative for allowing me to enjoy your artistic handiwork each and every day. But there you go, so there's part one of my Fallout Shrine. I publish new videos every single week, so if you don't want to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. I've been to Project Purity. That's right, now you too can confound your friends and family who recognize the Jefferson Memorial but have no idea what Project Purity is. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. Members get access to unique badges that display near their name in the comments section on YouTube, and they gain access to ox emojis they can use during the chats of my live streams. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private Discord channel on my Discord server. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're all here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon with more brand new videos.